Hi, today I'll be giving you some general overview of Team Viewer version 15. So if you if you've been working with Team Viewer in the past, like Team Viewer 12, 14, uh, probably you would have have some general knowledge of, of how Team Viewer works. But if you are new to Team Viewer, there are some features actually in Team Viewer which probably you've not been using for some time or up till this moment. So first of all, to find out which version of TeamViewer you are using, you need to go to Help. And here, when I click About TeamViewer, you can see I'm using the version 15 of TeamViewer. So under the remote control, so when you start TeamViewer for the first time, because right, right now um, I use TeamViewer almost almost every day at my work. So when I try to connect to someone's computer, the only thing I ask them is, please can I have your ID and your password? And sometimes I don't even need their password, so I can I can connect to the computer because I work in a do in an enterprise environment, so the PC belongs to a domain controller, so I can access their computer using my administrative administrator account. So what I request from them is their ID and password. So with the ID, actually I can go to a different computer and then enter this ID on that computer and from there I can request for their password I can then connect to this computer and mind you this password I can actually reset this password by creating a new random password so this password is not static so here if I go to remote management here you see we have some other um, possibilities to actually monitor and asset management to also actually install like endpoint protection on computers and from there we can monitor the endpoint protection on the computer and we can actually secure files and backup files restore option unlimited endpoints from team viewer as well but we have we will be redirected to like the team viewer browser so here you can see i'm being asked to log on to team viewer so i'll come to that later let me just cancel this right now so here if i go to meeting I also have the option to use TeamViewer to actually present the presentation, make video calls, and as well make a phone call. We can as well decide to join a meeting right now. If I have the meeting ID, I can just type the meeting ID here and put in my name and I can join a meeting. I can decide to actually schedule uh, a meeting right now. So I can decide to schedule a new meeting. I can give the meeting, just call it um, test meeting. And here I can say um, which, uh, what time do, are we going to have this meeting. I can schedule the meeting for tomorrow and, and change the time of the meeting to like 10 a.m. in the morning. And we can just save the meeting. And because before the time, let me see, I think it's on the, yeah, I have to change the end time as well because if not, it's not going to work. And then save the meeting. Here you can see have we have a meeting ID. And if someone decides I can send this as an email to someone, so the person can automatically just join the meeting. Or I can decide to copy this and paste it on, a, on an email, or just kind of send it to chat to someone to decide to join the meeting, use this meeting ID, and automatically they will join a meeting which, have, which they have been invited to. So I click cancel. And here, when I go to computers and contacts, you can see that I have logged on to this computer actually with my credentials. So right now, I have created this group for some time now. And every any computer I log on to, I log on to TeamViewer and I enter my credentials automatically. Every group you created, you 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 are going to see them. So to me, it's a, it's a very good idea to actually create an account with TeamViewer. So when you go to any computer, when you log on to any computer to any anywhere in the world, automatically you are going to get all the groups and contacts you've created. So we can actually decide to just click on add. Uh, for example, we can say, okay, let's add a new group. I'm going to call this new group. Let me just call this group um, London and click OK. And here we have the option to click Advanced and we can decide to actually modify this to our own choice. Let me just click OK. Here you can see the London load load group has been added to this group. We can as well decide to add 
um, a computer let me just add a remote computer so we can decide to add a remote comp computer if we know the team if you have an idea of that computer we can add it we can say okay what's the password if we have a password which has been configured on that computer and we can decide to give it a name because if we know the person who owns this computer we can just say okay this computer belongs to nora and the id of this computer is one two three four five six seven eight nine and the password well i can say um i don't know the password i will ask nora to give me a password or I connect to, the, to this specific computer all the time and I know the password, I can just enter the password here and I say, okay, this computer is in China and then I can just have the option, click advance here, I can also modify the remote re resolution, the quality of how this setting is going to look like and then click OK. List. So already there's a group called, let me just add zero to this and, and OK here we go so i just added the computer now to my group and the computer will be actually if the computer comes online it's going to actually be added to the group china so we also have the option to go to chat here we can decided to chat if we want to chat with someone we can just click on new message and here we can start to find um, loose search for someone who is online and we're going to chat with them and here we have uh, a new feature uh, in uh, team viewer 15 which of course here we have the team viewer pilot with the team viewer pilot you can actually scan this code and connect for example you can connect to the um, to the camera of a mobile device and someone can use that device actually to actually guide you to do some configuration do some installation installation or do some other things so this is new actually in um, in uh, in Microsoft Teams. I have not tried it myself, but I've heard from a colleague that it's a very good um, feature to be able to use. And also, you also need a license to be able to use this feature. So without the license, you will not be able to use this feature. But you can actually test it, but you will not have all the functionality as well. So let's go to extras. If I go to extras here, here I have the extras and have the I have options. Here you see we on the options we can actually do some also do some modifications. Here we have the general and here the the host name of the computer has been displayed here, and I have the option to actually change the theme of this team viewer to dark. And if your comp for example your computer is using a proxy setting, you can as well configure that proxy settings or to, to use a proxy settings. But for now this. Uh, computer is not using a proxy so I'm going to leave it under the default settings so if I go to security here I have the option actually to enter um, a password for this computer so I can remotely connect to this computer at any time if for example this computer um, or this is a server and I want to be connecting to this computer all the time or there's a computer which there's a specific software installed on it and it's on a remote uh, room and I want to be connected to this computer all the time I can enter a password here and connect to it all the time here you see we have the option to actually give what kind of password we want the standard um, which is four digits or secure secure eight characters very secure ten characters I think we are going to leave it on six characters here we have the option called window logon allow for administrator only so what happened is this if i click on not allowed so which means that someone will not be able to access this computer with an admin credentials if the person try to uh, access this computer with an admin credential it's going to be blocked so let me just give you an example okay let me click okay and here when i go to remote i have my id so i'm going to this computer let me just copy this id and I go to this computer from here and I type paste this ID here that's the ID of this Windows of this W03 and I try to connect so the computer is online so if I want to actually connect to that computer using my um, domain or using admin credentials I'll have to go to advanced and here on our authentication select Windows and here I have the option to actually enter a domain name or even log on to that computer locally. But now there's a problem. As you can see, under the Windows user's name, I cannot click on it. Why? Because under this, the, on a team viewer on this computer, here on the extras, 
options i have actually disabled it on windows logon if i click allowed now i click ok and i go back again to this computer click cancel and i try to connect again and i go to advanced windows as you can see now this is actually possible so let me go to back to this computer and show you some cool things so here we we'll go to extras and we have the options on the options on the security here we can actually configure some computers or deny access to some computers or only allow access to the following partners here on the remote control we have the option to actually configure the how the should the quality look like and also we can configure some other things like send key combinations open a new tab we can as well disable it or allow it here on the meetings we can decide to actually say okay when we connect to a computer how does it or someone connects to our computer how do we want the display to look like we can say okay we want it to be opt the optimized to be speed so we can actually do some configuration here and here on our computers and contact you can see that's my actually my my name my email address which i use to log on to this computer and my password so if i have a license but right now that i don't have a license to use TeamViewer, I'm just using the free version. I can as well enter manage my license there. And here you can see we are using the default communication and the volume as well. We can decide to mute it or we can decide to, to leave it that on. So we can configure under the we have the audio and the video as well. If you have um, a webcam co configured on this um, computer, you can decide to actually configure your webcam here. So on a custom um, invitation, if for example you want to send an invitation to someone, we can decide to customize our our invitation. I can just click this way and just type kind regards and Kelvin Johnson. So anytime I try to send an invitation to someone, it's going to actually show this uh, my uh, signature, and also I can also actually as well modify this test on this invitation message so when i go to advanced here you can go to advanced i click show advanced options so you also have some advanced like the display language you say auto select but you can select other language you can check for new version of team viewer which is weekly you can put it on monthly you can say um, all update no no automatic update so the update will actually display and then you will have to install it yourself and here when i scroll down you see we have some other features which of course you can take your time to look at this feature if not this video is going to be very very long so but here we have some other features which of course you can configure on team viewer so right now i'm going to connect to this computer and show you some other things which you can do when you connect to this um, computer so let me try to connect to this computer from windows 4 let me just connect to this computer as um, a domain admin And I click log on. Right now I'm being connected connected to that computer. As you can see, right now I've been connected to this very computer. As you can see, the, everything has changed. So when I go to the start menu of this computer, go to the start menu. When I come here, you see here is the start menu. So the user will be seeing everything I'm doing. But what I want to show you in TeamViewer. Is, is this when I go to here you can see we have some other options like the home the actions view communication files and extras so when I use team viewers smooth of the time I try to also communicate with my user for example I want to because sometimes I remember when I chat with and um, communicate with some users in China um, connect to their computer in China so I just try to communicate with them through the chat when I say hello so they're going to receive the message here you see it's going to receive the message and it can say hi it can as well send me a message and i'm going to receive that message as well here so we also have the option for example when i go to action i can actually lock this computer i can as well reboot this computer 
I can send the control alt delete. I can invite a participant, but to actually do this, I think you will need to have a license to be able to use this feature. So you can invite a third party or someone else to actually, um, let me go to action, to actually um, see what you are doing. For example, you, you're trying to solve a problem, the problem is not being solved. You can invite someone to actually take a look at what is going on. Here we can say we can set to the remote update or we can as well end the session. When we go to view here, we have the option to actually make this a full screen. We can make it original. So we can even change the screen resolution. You see, we can change the screen resolution and um, some other refresh the screen as well. On that communication here, I just show you we can chat. We can do a video call to the user and we can even switch side with the user as well. For, if, for example, you want to change someone's password in Active Directory and the person does not have the um, opportunity, like people who work um, um, locally, they don't have the opportunity to change their password because they have access their uh, password to Office 365. You can switch, switch side with a partner and then, then you ask them to change their password. Here we have the files and extra. We can as well share um, open file transfer, share a file with the user. We can start session recording of this session we are doing right now. We can take a snapshot. So let me just save us. It's going to be saved on this computer. Here we have the snapshot. We're taking a snapshot. Let me just click cancel. We can as well also go to here. And here we can also share this actually on this share file box on this computer or Dropbox, Google Drive or OneDrive. We can also activate TeamViewer printing. With TeamViewer printing, you can activate the printer of the user and print a document to the user's printer as well. So you hear the start VPN, it's actually gray out. We don't at this moment you cannot use the start VPN. So these are some of the cool features you can actually do with TeamViewer if you use TeamViewer on a daily basis. So if I if I want to end this session, I can decide to just click on the team viewer or I can go to my other here and just click end session and automatically the session will be ended. And if I go to the user's computer, you can see the team viewer session has been ended as well. So that's all about this uh, team viewer session. So please, if this has been a very good help to you, please don't forget to leave a comment or give me a thumb up for taking my time to create this video. And I believe if you have any question concerning TeamViewer, please don't forget to send me, uh, to leave a comment and I will reply as quick as possible. Thank you very much. My name is Kelvin Johnson and please try and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more IT related video. Goodbye.